The topics today is quite interesting. Building industrial, the industrial base in a competitive and controlled space. I think um, your panel members here will have uh, some really very interesting um, perspectives to bring forward to you. I know listening uh, throughout the day, we've heard some pretty uh, fascinating uh, discussions with relation to emerging technologies, open and safe frontiers, um, the pace of change, the pace of technological change, and the nature of these kinds of changes. And um, for us within, I, I work within the Materiel Group, the Department of National Defense. For us, we are uh, in the process of implementing Strong, Secure, Engaged, which means we are actively acquiring all sorts of different kinds of technologies. And so how that space works and what that means for our acquisitions, having a strong defense industrial base is very important for us. However, uh, D&D is not the only place where you're going to sell uh, equipment. Uh, strong export capacity is important, uh, which means uh, good line, uh, having strong alliances, knowing what the defense industrial base looks like in other countries so that companies can uh, adequately uh, partner with uh, other uh, competitors or uh, other, com other companies, pardon me. So I think it's important to consider when we look at this topic, what is the government able to do? What levers do we have in place? Are they the right levers? Uh, everything from export controls uh, all the way through to if you're going to look at um, the Canada, um, in the, um, some of the, the competitive uh, frameworks we have in place, um, all the way to uh, some of the industrial policies that we have. I think we have to look at if these controls are reasonable and if they make sense for this particular environment. So we have an illustrious panel with us today to talk a little bit about this, and I'll just introduce them very briefly. Um, if I start at this end, I have uh, Mr. Mike Petrick, who joins us from Avacent, uh, a global management consulting firm for government-driven industries. He served in a number of roles. Uh, some of you may know him in these, including government, military, nonprofit, uh, private industry. And prior to joining Avacent, uh, Mr. Petrick worked for the McCain Institute of International Leadership, working on issues affecting North American integration, energy, and security. Michael's government service includes time as a civil, uh, a senior civil civilian advisor to two ministers of national defense and an operational tour in Afghanistan as an infantry officer where he worked on professionalizing the Afghan National Army. I also have with me Mr. Dan Duque. Mr. Duque joins us from Tactics, a Canadian government and public relations firm. Mr. Duque has worked in government, private industry, and academia. He has held various technical and leadership roles in government, including launching the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises uh, at PSPC. Mr. Duguay was also the Senior Director of Defense, Industrial, and Regional Benefits Policy, where he oversaw substantial change and overhauled its operational framework. Mr. Duguay has been uh, Executive Vice President at Communications Research Canada and has served as Director General of Industry Canada. Prior to joining Tactics, Mr. Duguay was a Senior Director for Business Development in Canada with Thomson's Reuter, where he led strategic initiatives. And then I turn to my, my government colleague, uh, who I will start at the far end, uh, Mr. Ruben Kachadurian, who joins us from Global Affairs Canada, where he is Director General Trade and Export Controls. His portfolio includes the administration of the Export and Import Permits Act, which regulates the exports of military, dual use, and goods. He has previously held positions at headquarters in Ottawa, including the head of the presidency during the G8 Muskoka and G20 Toronto summits, and executive director for defense and security relations. A career diplomat in the Canadian Foreign Service, Mr. Kachadurian has, has had assignments in Riyadh, Amman, Beijing, and London. Mr. Kachadurian joined the public service following a seven-year career as a combat engineer in the Canadian Armed Forces, for which included a deployment to Bosnia in I-4. And finally, I have Mr. Jeff Waring, who joins us from Industry Science and Economic Development Canada, where he is Director General, Industrial and Technological Benefits. 
It leads a team responsible for developing strategies for le leveraging economic benefits from eligible defense and major Coast Guard procurements and monitoring and verifying the progress of prime contractors in meeting their economic obligations to Canada. His previous positions include serving as senior director in ITD policy at ISED and also director of defense policy and as ministerial advisor uh, at Industry Canada. So as you see, we have uh, people who've spent a fair amount of time in this space. And I'm going to start at this end with uh, Mr. Mike Petrick to, uh, to open us and, and maybe speak broadly about that defense industrial base. Thanks, uh, 